I get asked a lot, Chris, how do you stay productive and how do you know what to prioritize? As you know, we all have a million things going on. It's not just our jobs, but we're also probably in addition to our job, starting our own business. And then we have our own personal life that is also taking up our time and attention. I'm gonna go over three things that I rotate over and over again, no matter what stage of the business or no matter what growth cycle that I'm in in the business. This is going to apply to you even if you're just starting out or if you are scaling, et cetera, et cetera. So number one is delegating. And I'm going to go into specifics about how I delegated when I was only making $18 an hour. Number two is energy management. Again, I'm going to go into specifics about that. And then number three is revenue is your boss and you have to follow what revenue says what you have to prioritize. All right. So number one is delegation. When I was first starting up out on Upwork, I was making $18 an hour and I was really, really passionate about what I was doing because I was freelancing. It was the first time that I didn't have to go to a set place to clock in my hours based on when somebody told me to do it, I had my own freedom. So I was really grateful for that. However, I also was learning a lot of things. I was learning Canva to create social media graphics on my own. I was learning Adobe Creative Suite to learn how to Photoshop and also do video edits on my own. I was learning how to create a website. So I was learning WordPress and then figuring out what platform should I use, what theme, you know, there's all these things that you're learning. And I understood that the value of that learning was very important, even if I was making only $18 an hour. So the very first thing that I did was I outsourced and delegated my cleaning and my errands and my groceries. So again, even though I was only making $18 an hour at the time, and I think I was only clocking in about 35 hours a week, all the other time I wanted to reserve towards learning because I knew that I didn't have the money, but I definitely had that extra time to invest in building more skills to get my hourly rate from $18 an hour to whatever that next threshold was, which I think at the time was like, how do I get to $20 an hour? So I put out an ad on Craigslist looking for a cleaner to come in and an errands person to come in two times per week on Sunday and Thursdays. On Sundays, I had her come in for four hours and on Thursday, she came in for another four hours. On Sundays, she would get my grocery which at the time they didn't really have grocery delivery, but she would get my groceries. She would get my Prosecco mm -hmm. and she would also run my errands. Anytime that I needed a package to be shipped or whatever it was, she ran those errands. And in addition to that, I gave her light meal prep work. So for example, I had a, a croissant sandwich with hummus, onions like all you know tomatoes lettuce every single day for lunch so i would ask her to actually chop up the tomatoes and slice it and also slice the red onions and she would put it in a tupperware so that during lunch all I had to do was really quickly, within one minute, put my sandwich together and I can go back to work. And I hired her at $15 an hour. And then on Thursdays, she would take care of my laundry and she would I would have her clean one part of the house. That freed up my time. That freed up another eight hours in the week for me to invest in myself, to invest in learning. And that has been a continuous thing. Basically, once I started increasing my hourly rate as a freelancer, so I went from 18 an hour to $30 an hour. It was my next job. When I was at $30 an hour, I was like, hmm, you know what? I can probably hire a personal assistant at $15 an hour. Now that personal assistant then took over making appointments for me. For example, at the hair stylist, at the salon, she would actually also call the bank on behalf of me if there was like a transaction that had to be questioned because I placed value on every single minute that I had and put it towards the business. So I didn't want to be on the phone talking to customer service for 15 minutes for asking about moving my credit card auto payment or the Verizon bill or making an appointment at the nail salon. All of those things I outsourced and I delegated once I was able to afford it 
which was at $30 an hour. Once I was making $120 an hour, which by the way, I do cover that in another video about my trajectory from $18 an hour to $120 an hour. But once I started making about $120 an hour, that's when I started the agency because I knew I could afford hiring ad buyers and videographers at $20 an hour at that point. So I really just took it step by step and just freed up a little bit more of my time by hiring and delegating even when I was making only $18 an hour. And that is most of you. And you're probably making more than that. So that's how I started out. Number two is energy management. It's really important for you to analyze when your peak time is. I did a analysis all across about 20 team members to ask them how many hours do they actually have peak energy to put in their best work. And it was five to six hours for the first part of their day, then breaking and then coming back towards the end of the day after dinner, after walking the dog, after spending time with your friends and going out for a drink. At the end of the night was another additional two hours on average. So at 7.30, for example, they just go until 9.30 or at nine o'clock, they'd go until 11 o'clock because at that time you're back to, you've re-energized the part of your brain that is like thinking a lot and strategizing a lot. So everything is about energy management. Even for me, there are those people who have very set routines and they know that their energy is at its peak at 8 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Then there are those people who may have some kind of illness or something along the lines where their energy peaks and dips at different times day over day. And you have to pay attention to that because there are some people who really work best in the middle of the night. So like at 11 p.m. all the way up until 3 a.m. because there's no noise around them, for example. And then they'll sleep in until like 9.30, 10 a.m. And then there are those who um, wake up like I did this morning at 5 a.m. And I'm basically on my laptop at 5.15, I'm ready to work. And then I shower and get ready for the day, even though I've already put in four hours, five hours, but I shower like around 10 a.m. and I get ready for my appointment. So you have to be very aware of your peak energy because you have to put in your hardest work during that block. That's how I've always been able to manage my day, my daily like routine is always based on my energy peaks. Even if I feel like an energy peak happening at 10 p.m., I will get online and I'll start working all the way up until 1.30 a.m. or something like that because I'm going to take advantage of that energy peak. So that's really important. Number three is revenue is your boss. So as the, uh, the CEO and founder, of your business, you have to follow the money. There's going to be things that are going to change very rapidly. The market conditions are gonna change. Your team is going to change. You're gonna change. Your product's gonna change. Your service is gonna change. You have to adapt to what is going to actually bring in profitability. Even though I'm very strict with my team about hitting deadlines, I'm actually the one that doesn't hit my deadlines most frequently. And that's really because I am the one that has to adjust my workload in order to put out fires, in order to protect the revenue, in order to prioritize what I feel like is either protecting the revenue or generating more revenue, even if I already have a list of twos. I mean, even now, today, I will show you my Asana where it says I am like three days behind and I hate. This is the thing that de-energizes me is when I look at my to-do list and I'm like, shit, I'm behind. But I have to, again, self-manage my anxiety. I have to understand that, you know what, even though these things aren't getting done and yes, they're important, I know that this is actually really important. This is actually a training for the team that is going on YouTube, FYI. And that's because it's really important for me to really level up. One of the highest priorities is to make sure that my team is equipped with all the knowledge that I can give them from all of the trial and errors that I've done in the last two years. So those are my tips, guys. I hope that helps you out a little bit and that you're going to take action because that's the only time that this information is actually 
valuable is when you actually do it and not just skip to another video just to consume more content. Because if you're doing that, you're probably, you've probably been doing that for a long time. So just take that action and hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Thanks. Thank you.